Today we're taking a look at the Lenovo ThinkStation P510 for use in 2024. Before we start, I just want to admire this 3D ThinkStation logo on the front of the PC case. That's all, I just wanted to acknowledge it. According to this warning, this is a hefty PC case at 53 pounds. Unfortunately, I don't have another person to help me lift it, but I think I'll manage. Let's take a look inside. And here it is in all its workstation glory. Let's take this Quadro graphics card out and take a better look. This graphics card came with the system and it's a NVIDIA Quadro M4000 with 8GB of GDDR5 memory. On its looks alone, it's similar to a lot of Quadro cards. Looks just like the P4000 that I recently tested out in a P520 video. Looks like it has some SK Hynix chips, so that's kind of cool. The green PCB is somewhat nostalgic. I don't see a lot of cards like this anymore. I'm still waiting for red to make a comeback. So even though we have 8GB of GDDR5 memory, the other specs are a little on the lower end side. For a quick and dirty look on the Tech Power Up website, we see that 1080p is actually not in the green recommended zone. And further down in the relative performance area, we're below the GTX 1050 Ti. So I don't think this is going to make a great gaming graphics card. However, that's not its original purpose. So I am looking forward to testing it out with some light video rendering and handbrake video encoding. And beneath this rather unique looking tower CPU cooler, there's an Intel Xeon E5-1650 V4 4-core 8-thread CPU. Even though there's 8 DIMM slots, we only have 16 gigabytes of SK Hynix 2400 MHz ECC RAM installed. That's not such a big deal, that should get us where we need to go. And I'd really like to install more on top of what we have, but I don't have any DDR4 ECC memory to match what we have. It's been kind of hard to get good lighting without the reflections off of everything in this PC, so... Thanks for bearing with me. I was going to shoot a separate video doing this, but I figure I'll just combine it into this one. Here's a sneak preview of the upgrades we're going to install soon. Before we get to that, I'd like to talk a little bit about the features on this PC. There's a generous amount of PCIe lanes here. I'm just going to show a little text overlay. The main thing being these two PCIe 3.0 lanes. So we have choices for running two graphics cards in SLI or picking and choosing where you want to place your graphics card in favor of putting something else in the other slots. And I was wondering what this extra PCIe slot over here just underneath the RAM was for. Turns out it's actually called a flex connector. And it looks like this card right here is compatible, which means that you can actually install some M.2 SATA 3 drives or NVMe SSDs. So it looks like we have six SATA ports built into the motherboard over here, as well as one eSATA port. I'm actually a big fan of these four hard drive bays down here, as compared to the P520 where we only have two. And there's an extra USB 3.0 header down here too, which you could link to an expansion card over here. And there's a 650 watt light on power supply, which is plenty of power for the GPU upgrades. Just like the design of the rest of the chassis, it's a toolless experience to remove the power supply. You just need to pull that down and pull out. And we have a 90 millimeter air intake fan over here that can be easily pulled out for service. For rear exhaust, we actually have two 80 millimeter case fans stacked on top of each other kind of a different design and I actually really like the look of that which matches the CPU cooler fan over here. On the front I.O. the PC case we have four USB 3.0, an SD card reader, a microphone and headphone combo jack, and our optical drive. And the rear I.O. the motherboard has some audio in and out jacks, mouse and keyboard PS2 ports, a serial port, 4 times USB 2.0, an RJ45 Ethernet port, and four USB 3.0. And looks like there's a punch out for an extra networking port, which is not included on this motherboard. And the Quadro M400 has 4 times display port 1.4a. Before I forget, I don't think I mentioned what SSD I'm using. Let's open up the saloon style doors for the hard drive bay. Currently I have Windows 10 installed onto this Patriot P210 512GB solid state drive. I also wanted to point out this great graphic on the inside of the PC case side panel. Just letting you know about all the features on the motherboard in this nice little handy list. There's even a little QR code to scan for some additional specs. 
So before we go about installing the upgrades, I wanted to test out the system to see how well it worked with video rendering and DaVinci Resolve, video encoding and handbrake, and some gaming. First up, the segue to the DaVinci Resolve rendering results. Next up, the handbrake encoding results. I was actually quite pleased with the results of those tests. I definitely think you can get a lot done with this four core eight thread CPU. And even though the Quadro M4000 is a little bit on the weaker side, it's still very usable in 2024. Now that being said, with games, you are going to be a bit limited with this setup. However, it's not exactly a gaming PC, but of course that's something we always have to test out. So let's see how well this performs. So I'm pretty satisfied with those gaming results and you know what, that's pretty good on a budget. So now it's time to install the new CPU and GPU. For the CPU, we have an Intel Xeon E5-1650V4, six cores and 12 threads. And the GPU is this RTX 2080 Founders Edition card with eight gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. All right, so all we need to remove the CPU cooler is this Phillips head screwdriver. Let's get started. We just need to loosen these four standoffs here. And voila, here we go. One thing to note before I install the GPU, be aware that this ThinkStation has one six pin PCIe connector and one six pin turn eight pin. So you are limited to using those connectors for your graphics card. Luckily the Founders Edition in 2080 has that exact same pin out. So we're over here in a testing station and we're all set up and ready to go. The Last of Us Part 1 is busy building some shaders for us to play the game. And I noticed the temperatures are getting a little hot for this GPU. The CPU is what it is, that's not actually that bad, especially under load. So I've been using MSI Afterburner to undervolt the graphics card in an attempt to lower the temperatures and increase performance just a little bit. So just keep that in mind while you're checking out the gameplay footage that it's kind of a work in progress and something that you might want to consider if you're using something like this PC case where airflow for higher end gaming might be a little restricted, especially with the case panel on. One thing I was really impressed with was the DaVinci Resolve results, this cut to that. So that's about a two minute difference in rendering, so that's really great. Now let's check out the handbrake encoding results. Again, we have about a two minute difference in productivity, so that's also awesome. That means that changing out the CPU was definitely worth it. 
So let's check out the gameplay footage now and we'll come back and give some brief closing thoughts. So that concludes my video on the ThinkStation P510 Workstation PC. I personally really like how this PC is built. And if you see one for a good deal and you're like me, a guy who just likes to tinker and see what they can upgrade, definitely pick one up and you never know, you could end up using it as a daily driver. One thing I'd really like to do is purchase that M.2 adapter so I can include some faster SSD speeds and also expand the amount of hard drives that can be installed. Also, let me know if you're using one of these today in 2024. So thanks a lot for watching my video on the P520. I hope you have a great day.